Hey everyone, it's Katie and I'm here with Tutorial Tuesday. Uh, this week I'm going to show you guys how to make a reverse canvas and I'm going to layer adhesive vinyl on the reverse canvas. So it's kind of a two for one video this week. Uh, so the first thing that I do with my canvas, um, this is an artist's loft canvas from Michaels. It is a 10 by 10 canvas. Um, the first thing that I like to do is give it a quick layer of acrylic paint, uh, just a really light, thin layer. You can't really see. I already painted it so it will dry in time for the video, um, but it, I, I, you can paint it white. You can just use white, white acrylic paint if you want to leave the canvas white. You can use a color. It's up to you, um, but I just do a really light layer. And then what I like to do next is I flip over my canvas and I grab a ruler. And now my canvas is a perfect square, so I'm going to always double check that your frame is going to be a perfect square. I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to measure inside this frame. So it's about seven and three quarters by seven and three quarters. Um, so that um, is something we're going to hold on to for a little bit later. Now what I like to do, you can go ahead and you can get like a flathead screwdriver and kind of wiggle under there and pull up the staples, but I feel like that's really time consuming. So I just like to go ahead and I cut on the outside of the staples and I just use my X-Acto knife and I go ahead and I cut the canvas off. Because you're going to use the frame of the canvas as your uh, picture frame, it really is... Um, it doesn't matter what side of the staples you cut on, but I find this so much easier than trying to take out every single staple. Um, some people think it makes, it gives it a cleaner look to cut all the staples out, but for me, I just like what's kind of quick and easy. Um, and this, you can see, I just cut one side, and now it's kind of pulling up really easily around the rest of it, but you'll see it's kind of doing that and I don't really want that now it's still not going to affect my canvas because I don't need it to be that big because the frame is going on the outside but so it, just in case it doesn't rip more than what I need it to rip I'm going to go ahead and just trim all of my canvas all the way around to be on the safe side and um, I'm just going to go ahead and finish that up and then I'm going to pull my canvas off and then we'll set that aside. You can um, paint your frame with acrylic paint. You can use a stain. It's up to you. For this project, I'm going to be making the design that I chose for my mother-in-law. And I don't know if she's going to hang it in her house or at school, but because she has... Uh, a lot of natural wood colors at her home and from the pictures of her classroom that I've seen it's also a lot of natural wood colors so I'm not going to stain or paint this frame because I want to have it match as best as it can wherever she puts it uh, but you can stain it you can paint it use acrylic paint chalk paint whatever you want to do um, but I like to go ahead and do that relatively early on in the process so that it has time to dry, especially if you're using a stain, those usually take a little bit longer to dry. So now I'm going to show you, this is my frame, and you're going to see here, most people have these little holes, you might have a number. Uh, if you're staining it or coloring it, you can kind of sand this off, paint over it, it's up to you. The little holes, I don't, you don't really see them unless you get up close, as you can see. Um, the number. I'll put at the top, that way it's not something you'll see if you look up close unless you're looking up, which most people won't. So I'm just going to leave it as is. So I'm going to set it aside and I'm going to go ahead even and set my canvas aside too because we don't need that right now. So I'm going to pull up my computer and we are going to get to work on our design. Do this so it's a little more even. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go over here on the left side and click images and I'm going to go up here to categories and I'm going to select new or recently added. Uh, I saw a really cute teacher image in here that I liked. So if you need a back to school gift, this would be a really cute idea. Um, but I, I think my mother-in-law would really like it. So it's right here. 
Uh, I have Cricut Access, so it's uh, part of my subscription. It is M739D40A. I'll include that in the link to my video, but um, that is the image I'm going to be used. So I'm going to click out of here, click my image. I'm going to go down to the right hand side and insert images. Now before I do anything with this image here, I am going to go over to my shapes on the left hand side and I'm going to select a square and I'm going to make my square right up here. Because it's a perfect square, I can leave the dimensions locked and I'm going to make it seven and three quarter inches. This is the size that will fit inside my frame and I want to make sure, I'm going to zoom out a little, I want to make sure that I'm not making this too big for my frame, which can really easily happen when doing a reverse canvas. So while this image is still grouped, you can see right up here it says ungroup, which means it's still grouped. I'm going to resize it. And because I did the square after, my image is behind it. So I'm going to go up here to the top. I'm going to do a range and I'm going to move to front. And I'm going to make this just a tiny bit bigger. I don't want it too big because I still want it to be seen in the frame. So now what you can do here is go up to select all. And then you can align and center horizontally and center vertically. So that way, if you're looking to go back and layer it, you can do that. Um, you don't have to, but you can. So now I'm going to go ahead and hide my square over my layers panel because I don't need it anymore because I've sized my image. So what I'm going to do is now ungroup my image. I see that I have a green piece, a gray piece, I have this red piece, and then this other red piece here. This other red piece here, I don't really need that. So I'm going to go ahead and remove it and delete it. And now what I'd really like to do, um, you can leave the color of the, um, you can see, I'm going to zoom in close so I can see you guys can see it. You see how you can see in this H, you can see the grid line right here. That means that there's nothing there. So that means the teach, love, inspire is going to be cut out of the apple. It's not a separate word to be layered on top, but I would like to actually layer it on top instead of leaving um, just the color of my canvas showing through. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and I'm going to duplicate my, um, I'm selected my apple. I'm going to duplicate it. Now what I want to do is make sure it's layered up perfectly with my other red apple and I'll show you why in a minute. But in order to do that, what I'm going to do is go up here and select my original apple and I'm going to go up here to my X and Y coordinates and I'm going to copy and paste the X one and then I'm going to 2.086 is my Y coordinate. So I'll just remember that. So I'm going to click on this other apple and I'm going to paste in my X coordinate and then I'm going to go over to my Y coordinate and do 2.80 uh, 2.086 and it's perfectly lined up my images. So while I have this red apple selected, I'm going to go over to the bottom right hand corner and use my contour button and I'm going to get rid of all of this. I'm just going to hit the hide all contour button right down here at the bottom and that's going to hide everything inside and leave my apple shape, which is what I want for this one. Now, because it's all filled in, I'm going to go up to the arrange button and I'm going to move that to the back. Now I'm going to make sure, so I make sure I have the right apple. I'm going to select in my layers panel, the one that has the words cut out of it. You can see how it's there. And I'm going to go back to the contour button and I'm going to go all the way down and I'm just going to select the apple and that's going to leave just the words and we'll see I'm going to go back over to my layers panel and I'm going to select white so that way I can layer it on top of it and it's not just the canvas showing through some people like the canvas showing through I personally like the cleaner look of all vinyl but it's up to you it's totally preference this is just how I like to do it so now quickly, what I'm going to show you guys is how you can use registration marks to, um, to make lining up the vinyl easier. I will fully disclose that it is very rare that I use registration marks. I really just wing it. 
In this case, you could really easily wing it. Um, I'm gonna show you quickly. Because there's no holes here showing the words where it lines up, I can just lay it anywhere I want where it looks good. But for the purpose of the video, I wanna show you guys how to use the registration marks. So I'm gonna go back up here to hit undo so that I'll put it back where it is. And now I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, so make it a little bit easier for you guys to see. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my shapes and I'm going to select a circle. You can use select any shape that you want, but I like to use circles. And I'm gonna make it really, really small. And this kind of looks gray. So I wanna change it to brown in my layers panel, just cause that's what I'm going to use. So make it a little less confusing. So what I'm gonna do here is then duplicate this, go over my top of my layers panel, and I'm going to duplicate this. And I'm gonna kind of line it up over here. Now to, for the easiest, what I'm gonna do is hold the control key on my keyboard and select the other circle for my layers panel. And I'm going to go up to my align tool and I'm going to center them horizontally. And then I'm going to center them vertically to make sure they're completely even. And then I'm gonna go and select one circle in my layers panel and using the arrow keys on my keyboard, I'm just gonna move it over to the left and then I'll select the other one and move it over to the right. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click, hold control and select this other circle and I'm going to attach them. Now I wanna duplicate it. So you're going to need a set of registration marks for each color. So we have four colors here. So I'm going to duplicate this three times and then I'm going to select each attached layer by holding the control key on my keyboard and selecting them in my layers panel. This is the easiest way of doing it and to ensure you don't accidentally click anything else. And I'm going to go back up to my align tool and center horizontally and then center vertically. And I'm going to move them where I want them. All right, now here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go over to my, um, one set of circles, it doesn't matter because uh, for right now, because they're all going to be used. So just pick one, and then I'm going to go down and click the brown for the stem, and I'm going to click the attach key, the attach button. And then I, it's going to move it up to the top of my layers panel. So then I can go to the next set of circles, I can go down to my leaf, holding the control key, I'm going to select it so that both the circle and the leaf are selected and I'm going to attach and I'm going to do this for each color. So pick my next set of circles and you can tell which circles haven't been used yet because they're the original gray. So usually when I do my circles for my registration marks, I always leave them a different color than what is being used in my uh, image or design. Then I'm going to go down and I'm going to select my words. It's a little hard to see because it's white but I'm going to do that and I'm going to click attach and then I'm going to grab my last set of circles and the red and I'm going to click attach. Now when using attach, you make sure you always um, attach your like colors together for, um, for layering. So I'm gonna go back to my arrange tool up here and move this to the back just so I can see the full design. Now I'm going to go to make it. I'm gonna show you each mat. You can see the registration marks are up here and my design on each set of these. Now what I always like to do first is go ahead and grab all of my color vinyl and make sure, and I usually, sometimes I'll cut it down, but like for this green, I have a nice big piece here. Um, so I like to cut it after I've already, um, I cut it down after I've already cut it on my mat, cut my design out. That way I am not wasting vinyl and I can get as close to um, saving as many scraps as I can. So I'm gonna put the green down first because it's my last layer. And I only have a scrap piece of my brown. So I wanna double check and make sure that it's going to be big enough. So I'm just going to grab my mat. I can see that it ends at the three inch mark wide. Um, so this is actually gonna be perfect. So I'm gonna put the brown on top of the green and then I'll put red on top of that and then white on top of that. That way when I'm going to cut, it's already in order and I don't really have to worry about trying to uh, find everything and move, uh, figure out what's supposed to be next. Uh, I always double check my mats as I go along because I 
um, I've had it happen where I accidentally click something or my kids click something. So I always double check my mats when cutting. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my maker. Excuse the noise. I'm gonna move it aside. I'm just going to, I'm using just regular Cricut vinyl. So I just picked the vinyl setting and I'm double checking my mat. It's the white vinyl. And this is a kind of a little off white, but it was what I had on hand. So it will be fine for me. Uh, I'm going to carefully put my vinyl down on my mat. And I have the Cricut brayer because I have the maker, I use it for my fabric, but I have found that it really, really works well for all materials. Uh, it gets, just gets them really stuck on there, which is what, it's really nice, especially when you're cutting vinyl and you wanna make sure that it's stuck on there well, you don't have any bubbles, it is great for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that. I'm gonna load my mat and start cutting. So now while we wait for that to cut, um, I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about how the registration marks work. Basically, all you're going to do is line up the registration marks. Oh. I had something on my roller, I was trying to get off. Uh, I... Okay, sorry about that. So in order to make it really easy to layer, you're just going to have to line up your registration marks. Now, I don't really have, um, the only thing that's going on top of something else in this case is the white going on top of the red. So it's really, in this case, not too uh, important to use the registration marks because you could just put the white right on top of the red, like I said earlier, or in whatever way, and as long as it looks good to you. But the registration marks will help this keep it a little bit straighter, and sometimes that's something I have a really difficult problem with. And so instead of trying to get out my rulers and my laser guide and all of that stuff, I can just use the registration marks and just line it right up. Um, so I'm going to show you how really easy it is to lay it all down. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and let this cut and then I'll come back when we're ready to weed and apply. Okay, now I have everything cut and I'm just going to weed it quickly so that you guys can see, um, kind of see the registration marks up close, not just on the computer. So I have my Cricut weeding tool and I usually just grab a little corner of the vinyl and pull that up. And then I slowly kind of peel it back and just watch to make sure everything cut well. Usually I don't have an issue, but sometimes if you're cutting something really small and delicate, you might. So just be uh, careful when you peel it back. So you can see my registration marks are intact. Um, so I'm going to quickly just weed this all out. Now for this, I'm going to want to weed the i'm going to want to apply my red apple to my canvas first because it's um kind of the base of our whole image now because the stem and the leaf are separate and they affect um they factor into the overall height of my image i want to um i'm going to show you what i'm going to do i'm going to trim down my whole design um on the paper as close as I can get it to kind of eyeball it out on my design. You can also cut out, um, you could have gone back to your original design, welded the whole image and cut it out of paper so that you have an idea of where you want to place everything, uh, which is also a really great thing to do. But for me personally, I usually just eyeball it. Um, I don't, I just usually make for gifts and stuff and everybody's just, you know, happy that I made something heartfelt. So they're not too concerned if it's crooked. If it's super crooked, then I'll redo it. But um, I usually just, I usually just wing it. <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna finish weeding this up and then I'm gonna trim down my little apple piece there and I'm going to show you guys how and I can just can't really tell because it's light but some of these pieces I'm weeding out I just stick to the vinyl on here that isn't cut so it's not on my image but it's an easy way I think um, to 
take all of your weeded pieces and keep them from being all over the place or stuck to your fingers. It's easy to just stick them on this and, um, and then it just gets thrown all out. See, I tore my tea a little bit here, so I'm not peeling it carefully like I should. So make sure you go slowly. Again, this is for my mother-in-law, so the fact that I tore it a little, she probably won't even notice. <laughs> we are our own worst critics. So I'm just gonna peel it. I know it doesn't look like I'm peeling it carefully, but I am. And I'm just gonna go ahead and take these excess pieces stuck to my fingers, put them on here, throw them aside. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and cut down my apple as much as I can without losing my registration marks or too much extra space that I'm gonna want for when I put my transfer tape down to make pulling it up a lot easier. Um, we're gonna go ahead. I'm just gonna do this on the apple because I know that I left enough space um, when planning my design to fit in my frame nicely. And don't forget too, your canvas is a lot of extra space because we're doing a reverse canvas. So um, it really is, is not, going to be too difficult to get it on there nicely and then you can really center it up when you go to frame it. So I've got my canvas here. I'm going to lay it as flat as I can out and the reason I'm using adhesive vinyl, I know a lot of people use HTV but it's much more expensive and I want to show people that you can use adhesive vinyl, even Cricut the um, temporary adhesive vinyl and it sticks great. So I really wanted to show you guys that because I, I hate using more money than is necessary to do something uh, when you can save yourself a little bit. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is kinda lay this out. I think this looks about good. I've got my Cricut transfer tape here. It's just a standard grip, not the strong grip, so I'm not too worried about it. And because this is a reverse canvas and we have the canvas off our frame, it's going to, um, I'm able to just put this on a nice flat surface to rub it. I don't have to worry that, you know, there's that hole in the back of the canvas and I have to put something hard behind it because I don't. Uh, I'm gonna use my Cricut large scraper uh, I didn't lay this down really nicely. And I wanna make sure I get those registration marks. Now, when you're going to apply the adhesive vinyl, you really don't need to worry so much about rubbing down those, um, those registration marks really well because they are, uh, we don't want them on our final design. It's just for helping us line it up. So we were gonna want to pull those off easily. So we don't have to worry about using, um, scraping them down really well. I'm going to, sometimes I like to pull from different directions. That helps peel off the whole design nicely. It makes it a little bit easier. I should have cut this down, but a little late for that now. Um, I'm just gonna kind of bend this back a little and peel it off. Sometimes when it's a little bit of a smaller piece, it's a little harder to pull it up. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, I'm gonna throw my trash to the side. And then I'm going to, the, I like the Cricut transfer tape because it's got the nice guidelines. So I feel like that helps me keep it a little straighter. I still can't do it straight if I try, but I feel this helps a little more. So I'm gonna go ahead and place it down and I'm going to use my scraper. I'm just going to burnish it really well in all directions. I've got some bubbles there, so that's that popping in here. And I'm just going to carefully pull it back, make sure the registration marks stayed nicely. And you saw I didn't rub those down too, too hard. Um, all right, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to layer my stem and my leaf. Um, so we're going to do that quickly 
and I'm going to, I'm just going to do this. It's not, usually I would cut down my transfer tape, but I know that I need this for another project and I need the whole thing. And I think this is my last piece. So I'm, I don't want to cut it down. So I need it. So I'm just going to do the same thing with the little registration marks. Just kind of peel it back. Uh, to make sure it sticks to my transfer tape and then I'm going to show you the magic of registration marks and what you're going to do is you line up the left circle with this left circle and the right circle with this right circle it sounds really easy and it is um, so what I like to do first is line up my left side and then line up my right side um, that way I know it's even because I'm lining up one side and then the other. Um, I feel like that makes so much sense, but there are so many times where I don't do that <laughs> and then I regret it. So you can see, I'll show you the final design once I apply all four layers. Um, I just wanna get it on there and then I'll show you guys up close how nicely it layered and how easy this was. And I'm really glad that I can show you guys layering multiple colors, um, but also layering on top of each other. Because it's really the same thing, but it's also different. So I'm really excited I kind of got to show you both in one. Because I think it's a common question asked by a lot of people. And so I'm going to go ahead and line it up. Making sure I'm holding it nicely because my transfer tape is sticking to parts of the design. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make sure that that, that uh, leaf is down really well. But again, I don't want to rub my registration marks on too hard because I don't want them to actually last. I'm going to peel them up. So I'm going to go ahead and apply my words. I'm going to do it a little more carefully than I did the apple so I don't have as many bubbles. Um, for the, the apple, it wasn't too bad that I had so many bubbles because it was such a big image. But when you're using words, you really want to make sure there are no bubbles because you need it to grab around every letter. And when you have, you know, your A's and your E's and your O's, you want to make sure you're grabbing inside of that to pull this vinyl up really easily. And so the fact that I didn't worry too much about the bubbles with the apple is just because it, to me, it's a big image, so it's not as important as when you do it. Um, I should have laid it down more carefully. You definitely don't want bubbles, but it wasn't something I was so worried about because I knew it was just one big image that was gonna guide on. And as you can see, sometimes I kind of like to just peel my design from different um, directions and kind of wiggle it around. It's best to peel from a 90 degree angle, but because I didn't cut my transfer tape down, a little more difficult so sometimes when I get to a part that's kind of sticking and when I pull in one direction I try and pull the other and wiggle it and that helps to really get it on your transfer tape without too much hassle all right so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to line up my last registration marks and then I'm going to show you guys up close the final product and then we will attach it to our frame now because this design is really big I want to carefully apply my registration marks um, I'm actually going to kind of pull this paper back up and do it this way so I don't accidentally have some of my vinyl from my image on my transfer tape stick to the other vinyl um, so once it sticks it's really it's pretty much stuck on there so that's not your ideal so I usually put the kind of do this with my paper and then I'll carefully pull it back and slide this on I'm gonna go ahead and scrape it on this image is so cute this is one of the new access images my mother-in-law is going to love this it's so cute and I'm just going to carefully pull it back now, because you stuck the adhesive vinyl to another layer of adhesive vinyl, it's likely where it's gonna stick really well and pulling your transfer tape up isn't gonna cause too much of an issue. But just to be on the safe side, I always, 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 always pull really carefully. All 
right. Now what we're gonna do is, I have longer fingernails, so I can just peel these registration marks right off. Um, if you're using a weeding tool, I'd just be really careful with that because I'm, I always worry that I'm gonna stick a hole in the canvas. Um, so usually, you can use like your spatula, if you have the Cricut spatula. Um, I do, but it's in my other room right now. But you could use that and it's really cute. So I'm gonna show you up close. See, perfectly lined up with those registration marks and it's nice and centered. And now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to grab my frame and I'm gonna place it over my image. Now normally I would go ahead and I'd get out a ruler and kind of measure everything, but I'm really neurotic and that will take too long. So what I like to do is just kind of set this up how I like it. And usually I will take a lot of time and do it all, but we don't have the time. So what I'm gonna do is set it all up and I'm gonna take my X-Acto and hold my frame and I'm going to trim all this excess canvas off. I don't need any of it and it's really just gonna get in my way. Okay, and it didn't cut all the way through. I didn't want to cut my table, so I didn't go super deep. So I'm just gonna take my scissors and cut along this line. And then I'm gonna show you how we staple it back onto this canvas. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna go off screen to staple it because my staple gun is... Okay, now that I had my image all trimmed up, what I'm going to do is, remember at the beginning of the video I showed you how this is at the top, so we kind of want to keep that at the top of the frame. Um, I already trimmed my canv canvas down. I guess my video got interrupted, so I'm just going to show you quickly what I had done. I set my frame up, and I centered my image all nicely how I wanted it. Normally I use, you know, a laser guide and all that stuff, but I just eyeballed this one. Um, so what I did is I had my excess canvas all around it here. And I just went and I put my frame down and while holding it tightly, I took my X-Acto and I cut off on each side all of this excess canvas. And that makes it much easier so that when I go ahead and flip this over, it's all perfectly lined up. I don't have excess canvas. I know that it's still straight the way I did it and I don't have to worry about re-straightening it all up to staple it on the back. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a staple on each side um, in the center. So the left, the right, the top and the bottom, right in the center. Now I can, I still have my staples from here before. So I'm gonna go, I can feel it and I'm gonna go right underneath it so I don't um, staple twice. And I'm gonna do that off screen so that um, you guys don't have to hear my really loud staple gun. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna staple on the right. I'm gonna pull this really taut after I staple it. I'm gonna put a staple on the left and again hold it taut for the top and the bottom. And then we can add extra staples. So I'm gonna do that and I'll come right back. Okay, so I went ahead and I stapled the top and the bottom in each side right in the center. And then I went back while pulling nice and taut and I stapled each of the corners and I like to do it at a bit of an angle, um, but that's preference. And then once I'm done, I'll go back and I'll, you know, I'll put two more staples kind of in each side just to make sure it's really nice and taut. But you can see this is our final product. Can't wait to see your designs.